first guest is Bailey Hayes, a principal software engineer at Single Store. Um, Bailey and her team are working on bringing universal language support to user-defined functions. Um, and Bailey will demonstrate some of the work we're doing the, at the Launchpad team right now. So it's early work, but we are taking risks and we're demoing it live to you. And then I will be speaking with Brian Harris, Executive Vice President and Chief Technology Officer of SAS, on SAS to the leader in advanced analytics, AI and machine learning, on how advanced analytics is evolving in a world of hybrid multi-cloud, and we'll be talking about the SAS single store partnership. Bailey, first to you, welcome. Tell us a little bit about the project you're working on. Sure, uh, it's an early prototype from the Launchpad team. It's adding universal language support to our engine. Uh, so Any language, universal language. Any language that compiles to a new technology called WebAssembly. Tell so us about WebAssembly, what's that? <laughs> WebAssembly is an assembly-like language that targets a stack virtual machine. Uh, so the idea is that um, with WASM, WebAssembly is also known as WASM, we can write once and run anywhere. So that sounds like Nirvana. Maybe. Program in any language, compile and run anywhere. Any operating system, any host, any environment. So yeah. it's not just for web, right? No, it's not just for the web. And we're actually seeing uh, WASM be used in a number of interesting use cases, like with Cloudflare and Fastly, they've implemented WASM support for serverless functions. And so if you think about serverless functions and how they relate to maybe a database, you might think that user-defined functions are uh, really similar to a serverless function. So this is kind of like our early API. It's uh, in flux, but the idea is that you can create a WASM module, let the database know about it, and create additional functions off of that module that are exported on the WASM function. What can you put in the module? <laughs> Great question. The first thing we thought of was using um, machine learning algorithms and being able to deploy models at scale in production next to your data. So a really quick first high level thing that we thought of was, hey, what are our top highest scoring records according to some machine learning model? like? If I offer a discount, uh, which users are going to continue subscribing to my service? And so we don't really care how the model comes about, what language is written, what is in Python or in Rust. If it's compiled to WASM, we'd love to take it and execute it. And this doesn't have to be just a machine learning model. It can be really any logic. If you can program it and execute it with the data, we can, take, we can do that. Exactly. That's yeah. the moonshot. That's, that's the idea. Okay, uh, how close are we well, launching, the, launching to the moon? You want to see it? I want to see it. Okay. We all want to see it. All right, so we're going to start really simple. Uh, I created a, uh, a, a little Rust script that um, does some addition, adds two integers together. I know it's not very amazing. Yeah, it's Hello World, but it, it's, it is, it is yeah, the first it. Hello World of this demo. Um, I'm able to add it to my database. So you take, took a Rust program, compiled it, added it to the database, and now you're executing as part of a query. Exactly, yeah. So let's write out a query. I'm going to select two and two. I hope that's four. Me too. Uh, oh, I have to actually you know, call my function like that. Now you can tell yes. it's live, right? That's why you have errors. Um, Ship it. <laughs> maybe, maybe. All right, let's make sure these are integers. OK, right. so I can get to zero. Um, but yeah, that's pretty lame, right? Let's do something really It's cool. lame and it's not, because it's quite powerful to match to go from a modern language like Watts directly into the database. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was pretty excited when uh -huh. I saw it for the first time. Okay, let's ramp it up. Okay, so let's take a m very popular machine learning algorithm and the hello world of data science. The and Iris data set? Yes, this is the Iris data set. So it's a... a classification problem of being able to say, let's take some measurements of the sepal length and width and petal length and width, and we'll be able to say which uh, species of iris it is. And, and you can see in the picture that they're pretty similar. So you kind of need these metrics to be able to say exactly what it is. Oh, and a different application could be, you, if this is a clustering application, wait, the outcome is a, based on data, the assignment to a category or a class, or what's called a cluster, could be a segmentation algorithm for customers. 
Um, anything. Anything. I mean, it, it's any kind of algorithm. I'm uh, not a data scientist myself, so I went, I went simple. Um, well, you used a gradient boosting model. Yes, I did. Uh, gradient boosting with decision trees. Uh, so those, that, those decision trees are deployed in my model in my WebAssembly module. So it, it moves along with my WASM module. The, the data here is pretty simple, as you can see. We've got basically the same number of each species in my data. I'm going to use the last row. And let's hope that it comes back as Iris Virginica. Hey, so that's number two. What is number two? Number two, two is, is Virginica. Virginica. Yes. Yeah, OK. <laughs> now, this, now you compare your prediction to the ground truth. We know what the origin of value is. Now a new observation coming in will not have a species assignment, and you need the data to predict it, to classify it. Yeah. It's an amazing story. We took a machine learning model that was developed in, in, in Rust with gradient boosting and deployed it right into the, into the database safely, securely, um, performantly. And you're not a data scientist. Yeah, and I was you able to all do this. it. <laughs> Congratulations, Bailey. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. But uh, now we could do things like ingesting data in our, da in our pipelines, using uh, the pipelines from single store, and do things like transform our data with any utility function, any business library that you've already written. You can leverage existing code. So say your data is in JSON format or in YAML format, you could use utilities like JQ and YQ to transform that data. And uh, do you, I mean, really, it seems like right now the possibilities are limitless. Also, this is a research phase for us. It's exploratory. Yes. We're learning about WASM. A lot of folks, a lot of developers are interested in WASM technology. How did they get in touch with you? And where, do you, where did they find your work out there? Yeah, we, we created a GitHub repo called Single Store Labs. And so I've been putting a lot of our prototypes out there. Um, me and my team, um, we're just three people right now. Under you. Growing. <laughs> growing, growing, though. Growing, yes, growing. growing. Um, and yeah, you can also reach out to us on LinkedIn and Twitter. And um, we're floating around in all the various WebAssembly discords. So. And we're hiring. And we're hiring. <laughs> Join me. Thank you, Bailey. Thank you. Great work.